The U.S. presidential race has made a pit stop in Pennsylvania. Now, both candidates, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, are trying really hard to woo the voters in the battleground state with election day just four weeks away. Now, in the red camp, Donald Trump was at an election rally in Joe Biden's hometown, Scranton in Pennsylvania. In his signature style, he took a dig at his political rivals and said that he will save democracy once he's voted back to power. And yesterday, Tampon Tim said they want to abolish the Electoral College, taking away all electoral power from basically from the voters of places like like Pennsylvania. Tim and comrade Kamala are really a true threat. They are a true threat to democracy. I'm not a threat to democracy. I'm the one that's going to save democracy. Now, Kamala Harris's campaign is also wooing the voters in Pennsylvania, and she is bringing some star power with her to the critical battleground state. Now, later in the day today, the former American President Barack Obama is expected to rally for the Democrat presidential nominee. So as the election fever gains momentum, sources are saying that Kamala Harris's campaign has raised a staggering one billion American dollars as of September end putting a war chest in a much stronger position than Donald Trump. As for the Republican leader, his campaign fund currently stands at a measly $308 million in comparison with Kamala Harris's war chest, which is way far behind his political rival. With the nail-biting race drawing closer, an interesting popularity trend has also emerged in favour, it appears, of Kamala Harris. Now, at least according to one survey, the vice president has managed to galvanize a critical vote bank in her favor. And this is the vote bank of the suburban voters and the middle class households. So let's take a quick look at some trends from the past few months. Now, during June and July, when Joe Biden was still in the race, he was trailing way behind Donald Trump by 3%. The trend over the two months showed us to have Biden at the time, was struggling to rally the suburban voters in his favor. But when Kamala Harris stepped into the ring as the Democrats' presidential nominee, the gap began to close between her and Trump. And now, the most recent surveys from September and October indicate that Harris leads Trump at 47 to 41 percent amongst the suburban voters. So from July to when Harris launched her campaign to now, the vice president, it appears, has managed to swing nine percentage points in her favor. Now, America's suburban demography accounts for the large vote share and includes people from across all races and ethnicities. While Kamala Harris enjoys a steady support on several fronts, when it comes to key issues like immigration and economy, several polls have shown that the voters are leaning towards Donald Trump as the preferred president to deal with these issues. So with election rallies in the last phase, Donald Trump has proposed ending U.S. income taxes for Americans who live abroad as part of his 2024 presidential campaign. Now, this change will impact nearly about 9 million American citizens who reside overseas. It will simplify their tax obligations to the United States. Now, currently, the Americans who live abroad are required to still file their taxes with the IRS, even if they don't owe taxes to the American government. The proposal is aimed at ending the double taxation that some expats face, in addition to the taxes that they pay in their country of residence. Now, under the current tax laws, the U.S. citizens abroad can earn up to $126,500 without paying federal income taxes. And those earning about that threshold may owe the U.S. taxes despite already having paid taxes in their host nation. Now, Trump's plan could potentially eliminate this burden. However, his pledge would also require the congressional approval. Advocates say that it could prevent the U.S. citizenship renunciation, which occurs partly due to this complex tax regulation. While Trump's proposal targets reducing individual tax bills, his broader economic plans focus on offering tax relief to the companies operating within the United States. His overseas tax cut pledge contrasts with the policies that would raise the taxes for businesses manufacturing offshore with tax reforms estimated to exceed $10 trillion over the next decade. Now, Trump's focus on tax cuts remains central to his 2024 campaign.
The chat GPT maker OpenAI has reported a rising trend in the misuse of its AI models to create fake content. And this includes articles and social media posts designed to sway elections. According to the report, criminals are increasingly using AI tools, including chat GPT, to conduct illegal activities such as creating and debugging malware and generating fake content for websites and social media platforms. The company has said that this year till date it has managed to foil 20 such attempts, including a set of chat GPT accounts in August that were used to produce articles on topics that included the 2024 U.S. elections. So despite of these incidents, OpenAI has confirmed that none of the efforts to influence global elections have gained significant traction or large audiences. Meanwhile, concerns are growing about the use of AI tools and social media sites to generate and to propagate fake content that is related to elections, especially as the United States is getting up for its presidential election on the 5th of November. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Russia, Iran and China are using generative AI to disseminate fake or divisive information to influence the 2024 U.S. elections. All right, now to give us more perspective in terms of what, of course, is happening in the American elections, we're being joined by Ms. Joanna LeBlanc, who's a political analyst and a foreign relations expert. She's joining us live from Washington, D.C. Now, Ms. LeBlanc, this, this is an election that is being watched across the world. And one thing that I want you to weigh in on is, is the staggering disparity in the amount of funds that these two candidates seem to have raised. Now, Kamala Harris is, in fact, late into the race, has managed to put together one billion dollars she's bringing in a lot of this big money the backing of the billionaires while donald trump on the other hand who's seen as someone who's very business friendly has managed to generate a war chest of just about 300 plus million dollars are we to now read that the big money in america the super PACs, are all backing kamala harris i wouldn't necessarily say that um i think that uh What's important to note is that, uh, one, by the time that the election gets here, which would be on November 5th, uh, Vice President Harris would have spent about $2 billion, or at least have raised at least $2 billion. And that is an unprecedented amount of money that will be going into our elections. Uh, and I think it's important for Vice President Harris to raise um, this much money. Um, and the reason being is that literally, uh, she she's had only a hundred days to run for the president of the United States and and had very little um, name recognition, even though she once served as a United States senator, the second black woman, a woman of color to have served in that role. Um, she's previously held major positions um, in, in the state of California as attorney general and so on. But yet uh, the very public wasn't necessarily familiar with her and although she is currently the vice president of the united states mm -hmm. of america but as we know the vice president's role is not to overshadow the president um so i think all of the dollars that you see going into her campaign uh, whether it's coming from super PAC, which is important but there's a lot of money also coming from individuals like right. people who are truly interested in seeing that that she wins this election you know a lot of people around the world do not know but lobbying in american politics is pretty much legal so when you have these super PACs who are investing so much in the campaign of Kamala Harris. Now, there is going to be a lot of interest in, in knowing as to who is backing Kamala Harris at this moment. Now, in contrast, Donald Trump is managed to get just about 310 odd million dollars. So the question is this, Kamala Harris, till the time that she became the contender, was not seen as a vice president who performed so super, superbly well. But now, the surveys seem to indicate that Kamala Harris is now pulling ahead of Donald Trump. What has she done right in the last 90 odd days that she's been in the race? I think that one, um, she's had a great team. 
um, to um, campaign on her behalf. And she herself has been out knocking on every door. And I think she's very uh, committed to not leaving um, anyone behind, right? She's very visible in the community. Uh, she's very visible across the country. Um, and the, 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 the campaign has had a robust public relations plan to go out to make sure that the public understands her policy position, right? right. Um, and also for the public to understand who she is as a candidate and what she will bring to the table if she were to become president of the United States. So I think uh, communications wise, mm -hmm. uh, her team has done an excellent job. All right. And also with respect to the black voters within the United States of America, there was in fact this campaign, you know, of sorts, which said, I don't stand with Kamala Harris because she does not stand with me. This was something that the black women came out and said. Do you think she's been able to now convince the black voters in America that she is the person that they'll have to rely their faith in? Because probably she has their best interest that she, when she becomes the president, will push through with. So has she succeeded with the black voters? Well, first and foremost, um, uh, African Americans in America have historically voted um, a Democrat. Um, the last election with Joe Biden um, and President and, and Donald Trump, uh, black women voted 90% for uh, Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. And I don't see a shift in that uh, this election. I think black women in particular are going to support Vice President Harris and they have galvanized, they have mobilized. Right. Um, um, to help her uh, win this election. In fact, in addition to that, uh, you have different groups within the American public that have created, um, uh, you know, uh, their own uh, their their own network. Like, for example, you see LGBTQI plus for Kamala Harris. Uh, you see uh, Black women for Harris. You see, you see Black men for for Harris. You see lawyers for 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 Harris. You see doctors for Harris, because I think there's a momentum right. uh, and I think people are trying to seize on the momentum, but also to look at who her opponent is. All right. We'll have to leave there. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Liblong, for joining us and getting us that perspective then. Thank you so much. For all the latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.